<laughs> Opinions expressed on ACB Radio are those of the respective program contributors and cannot be assumed to serve as endorsements of products or views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. You guys are good Annette, to go. you are on. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody out there in ACB, American Council for the Blind. Today, we're going to do a little bit different show for you. I hope you like it. It's going to be behind the scenes about what I eat in a day, okay? What I eat in a day. Of course, I'm going to try to be on my best behavior. No uh, fattening stuff today, but I'm going to keep it all healthy if I can. So I hope, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to tell you why I eat what I eat and who my influencers are as well. So I look forward to that. Take it away, Ellen. I'm Alan Preston, and I often host Cooking Without Looking right alongside Annette. Although we are in different locations, we have been together in the past, and we've had a lot of fun doing this over the last years. What you cooking today, Annette? Well, like I was saying in the intro, Alan, I'm doing what I eat in a day. I don't know if you can, can you hear me okay? Because I have a little bit of music on, kind of get me, get me going here. Is it okay? I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I was just getting a drink here. I want to show you my wonderful fuser. I put some mango in there and it's diffusing all the flavors. Not real strong, but gives it like a hint. And because I have Stargatt's disease, which is a form of macular degeneration, I try to do try to do little tips to help things. So on this picture, I took a black marker, if you could see it, and I mark where the opening of the picture is. So when I'm ready to pour it, I can line it up with the spout and it makes it so much easier. Otherwise it's hard to see where the water comes out. So that's just one little tip. That's a great idea. Okay, well, we're gonna get started. Get started. In the morning, um, I try to actually stick to one thing because it's easy and if I have to go out the door, I can do that. Um, it's called a smoothie. I'm sure you've heard of them. Everybody has their own version of a smoothie. And you would think I would do that early in the morning, but I do something called intermittent fasting, which I'm sure you heard of that as well. I, I try to have my last meal the night before, like at 8 p.m. And then I have my smoothie anywhere between 11 and 12. And this is how easy it is. First, we're gonna use some milk. I use almond milk in this. So I put I like about- almond milk too. It's easier on my stomach. Is it? Yeah, because you might be lactose intolerant, right? I'm not sure, but I like it better. Yeah, I'm going to lower that music. Okay. Put the almond milk in there. I get this at Aldi's. It's actually organic, unsweetened almond milk. And then to this, I'm going to add blueberries. So why do I eat blueberries? They say that keeps you from getting Alzheimer's, but I, sometimes I forget to have a cup. <laughs> but I try to get like a cup a day. And it really makes it taste so good. These are just frozen. And I suggest the frozen because they won't go bad. And these are organic wild. They're the small, tiny ones from Trader Joe's. They're actually more potent than the bigger ones. Okay, I got the last one in there. There you go. And to this, believe it or not, I'm going to add some greens. I hope you don't get grossed out at this. But well, first, let me add my protein powder. I use this organic protein powder from Sam's. Nobody's giving me any kudos for telling you where I get stuff, but I thought it'd be easier for you if I tell you where, that way if you want to pick something up. I put just a scoop. The serving size is actually two scoops, but I just put one. For the most part, I eat vegan, and this is made from peas. So it's a pea protein, and it has about, let's see, Oh, 21 grams if you use two scoops, so I only use one. So do the math, that's about 10. <laughs> 10 grams of protein, and I try to get about 50 to 60 grams a day. I don't believe in um, using a lot of protein. It's hard on the kidneys. You really don't need it unless you're a bodybuilder. Um, I don't do that, but I do work out with weights, so I like to get at least 50 to 60 grams a day. And if I'm not eating beans or I'm not eating tofu or tempeh, 
I need a little more protein, so this helps out. Next, Does I'm putting- Does protein powder have a taste to it or is it neutral? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that because this one used to taste terrible. It had like a gritty aftertaste, it was awful. They changed the formula on this. This is vanilla, Alan. They do have chocolate. Mm. So it has a wonder, I mean, it is amazing flavor. I love it, it's like a milkshake. And what I'm going to add to that are some greens because we don't get enough greens. Here's some collard greens that I washed and froze in a Tupperware. That way they don't go bad as well. These were fresh when I got them. I put some greens in here and a little bit of spinach and arugula as well. I don't know if you could see that, but that's the way you're gonna sneak in your greens. Then also I'm going to put some chia seeds. Why chia seeds? Well, they got fiber and omega-3s, which are good for you as well. So one thing I forgot to do is bring my little blender over here. So let me go ahead and get it. This is a nature bullet, very handy, very helpful. Hold on a second. We couldn't hear you when you were away from the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using my nature bullet, but I got a bed bath, and I'm going to make this right in the nature bullet. This thing's so easy. I was using this big Vitamix, but this is so much easier. And hopefully it won't get stuck on it. Sometimes it locks up. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. At first I couldn't see that it has these raised bumps in it and you're supposed to line them up. So it kept locking up on me. But now that I know how to use it, you know, when you're visually impaired, once you know where all the buttons are, it definitely helps. So that's where I'm at with this. Okay. so. We put it in here and I'm going to start it. So you might want to plug your ears for a moment. Okay, one more time. Oh, that isn't too terribly loud. Okay. This looks yummy. It is very good because with the protein powder, it adds a sweetness because I use stevia and it's so good. Now I'm going to pour it into my fancy cup, plastic wine glass, just for fun. You can see how smooth that came out. You can't even tell that the greens are in it. Let me taste it. It's so good. And you could do so much with this. You could put vanilla in it. Without the blueberries, you can put bananas, of course, pineapple, cacao powder, which is just another name for chocolate, has a lot of antioxidants. This too has a lot of antioxidants with the blueberries. So that's what I have for breakfast, quote, 11 or 12. I don't know if you can call that breakfast still. But that's my first meal of the day. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a salad. I know it sounds boring, but let me move this camera a little bit. Sorry. Hope you can see me there. It's all my ingredients are over here. We can see you just fine. Okay. I follow Dr. Cullen, Joel Cullen. I don't know if anybody heard of him. He's pretty famous in the vegan world. And he wrote how to how to live to eat to live. Eat to live, how to lose weight, all that good stuff. His philosophy is low saturated fat under 20 grams a day and lots of fruits and vegetables. So that's what I follow and try to follow it all the time. It's not always easy, especially when you're remodeling and everything, but this salad, I just chopped it up. Of course, I washed my hands. We got romaine in here, about two, two of the stalks are one and a half. And to this, I'm gonna add some coleslaw, but it's, there's no mayonnaise on it yet. I'm not gonna use mayonnaise, but I'm just taking a handful of the coleslaw. This is mainly for crunchiness. So good. I have a little more crunch from there. So that's the coleslaw. You could do so much with this. You could buy a prepared salad at Publix and then just add stuff to it. So easy. All right, let's put a little bit more greens. This is arugula and spinach. A little bit of that on the top. And add some carrots. I think I have to give this to Skip for dinner. I don't know. Since I'm doing the work right now, right? Yes. I'll tell you, when I was when I was a little girl growing up, my mom always had a salad every night. 
And being Italian, you know how Americans eat their salad at first, we always ate our salad at the end. So now I switched it and I eat it in the beginning. I think it's a lot healthier. I got some cut up zucchini here. Some of that. I left the skin on because these are organic, so I don't want to waste the skin. You know, we're going to pay that much money. You might as well. You might as well eat it all. Okay, so that zucchini on there because I'll be honest with you, I really want a cucumber, but having the visual impairment, I picked zucchini thinking it was cucumber. So that's that. Now, to this, I'm adding the magic ingredient. This is a staple for vegans or beans. You don't like beans, you're in trouble because vegans eat a lot of beans. These are just black beans from the can, and I rinsed, I soaked and rinsed them. They're organic. I'm going to pour them on top of the salad as well. Ooh, it's starting to look pretty. Also, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a test at the end. You got to remember everything I put in here. Here's some red onions that I chopped up earlier. Oh, this looks very, this looks too healthy. I don't know. What do you say? And we got some. Red peppers. I didn't cut them up yet, but just chop them lightly. I'm not using a sharp knife today. So. Annette, is there a lot of nutritional value difference between red peppers and green peppers and yellow peppers? Oh, that's a good question. I do know that red peppers have more vitamin C. So I always ask for the red peppers. But uh -huh. anytime you have any kind of vegetable, especially raw, these are well, a lot more nutritious. But remember, the red ones have more vitamin C. You can't go wrong with veggies. They do have a lot of properties. Here's some tomatoes. I just keep them whole because they're little. The less work, the better. Tomatoes. Another secret of green, I like to use is pumpkin seeds. Why do I use them? Let's see. You know what? They're very high in potassium. They have Iron, in them. iron, calcium, vitamin D, very healthy for you. You can either roast them or just take a small handful and sprinkle them and they give you some crunch as well. You could also add croutons to this. I need a bigger bowl. <laughs> I, packed, I packed everything. So take a look. You can see that. It looks pretty good. It looks very good, actually. Very healthy. And for dressing, usually I make my own look at garlic, just put garlic, balsamic, a little mustard and some vinegar, and there you go. But the other day I was at the store and I saw this skinny, let's see if I can read this. It says skinny girl, fat free, sugar free, and it's called poppy seed. So that's awesome. I would just pour this on top. Not yet, I'll wait till I serve it. But you could do tons of different things with dressings, whatever you like. I think the dressing makes the salad. If you have a bad dressing, not good. Okay, so that's what I have for lunch, that. And with it, you can have a big appetite. Actually, when I started this diet, well, let's not call it a diet, more of a lifestyle. I lost like 10 pounds, just like that. Just cutting out meat. I don't even eat fish. I eat tempeh, tofu, and beans, lentils, things like that. Here's a sweet potato. Believe it or not, everybody, everything has protein in it. So if you eat it up for, I'm doing good on time. So I will definitely be going way ahead. Does anybody have any questions? Well, I got a quick question for you. I just saw you put something in the microwave, and I heard the thing go beep, 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 just like mine did. And I don't think you were up there with your magnifier. How do you know what buttons you pushed? I do that blindfolded. I've, yeah, I've had the same microwave for seven years. I don't use any special settings. I just push the start. Hold on a second. Now you got me wondering here. Um, I put the, yeah, I hit the middle button for how much time. I just go by time. I don't go by what it actually is. So with the sweet potato, I've seen this earlier today. I see like about eight of them. I put some hummus on it. Hummus is great. Another name is chickpeas or chichi beans or garbanzo beans. It's all the same stuff, right? Right. It has protein and it has fiber. 
And instead of butter, I'm going to use the hummus. So you fill that up here, and you get your protein that way. Yay, you got to have your protein. This is the way I sneak it in. And so I'm going to eat. I would eat this for lunch. Sweet potatoes, I need something hearty and something to bite my teeth into. And I don't have any, I don't need bread. And then I have the salad, not this whole thing. Okay, I'm not that much of a pig. Okay, I am a pig. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's what I have for lunch, guys. Let me try this hummus. Mm, that's so good. Whole Foods has a hummus without oil. And um, yeah, it's oil free. This one is from Walmart, but it still tastes so good. Last but not least, this is going to be for dinner. Can you see okay over here? Turn the camera a little bit. Uh, I'm calling this my quick and easy stir fry. Basically, I bought a bag of organic cauliflower. I think it's got broccoli in it too. It's got the purple and the red, no, purple and green and yellow. Because even though we're visually impaired, we still want our food to look good for our, for our friends and family. So I don't cook with oil, so there's a little bit of water in here. I'm going to turn the fire up. I'm going to saute this a little. It's already been thawed out. Mm -hmm. and again, I'm going to add beans that I had from lunch because they're not the same beans, of course. No, the same can I split it to half with the lunch, half with the dinner. I'm going to put the beans, black beans in the pan. I'm trying to describe everything for those that are totally blind. So help me out if I'm not doing it enough for you. So we got our veggies in there and we got our black beans. Now the key with this is to have some spices are so important. I packed most of my spices except the garlic. I do about, I don't know, about a teaspoon of garlic. I don't like to measure. I'm a visual impairment. I just try to do things easier, try to eyeball it. That's why I don't bake. I bake, have to measure everything, which I can do, but I don't like to. Now this is onion powder. It starts to be good. See if it's starting to pop up. I wish I had a gas stove. This is electric. I kind of have some of this. Okay, this is ginger. Not to be confused with Marianne and <laughs> yes, from Gilligan's Island. I love Ginger. She's great. Yeah, we got to meet her. Skip and I went yeah. to, she, she, she calls herself an artist. And so we went down to Fort Lauderdale on this gallery. And she was there, you know, representing her art that night. She was like 85. This was like four or five years ago. I don't, I don't know if she's still alive. Oh, yeah. she, uh, she does stick figures. Stick figures, it looks like a drawing that a five year old did, but they're famous. So we skip bought one actually. He's got it up in his office, but she was huh. <clears throat> very pleasant, still very, very elegant. Okay, so that's in there. I'm going to add some teriyaki sauce. The key is the flavor. So if you don't have good flavor, it's just not going to roll. Then Men, first of all, I'm generalizing, but most men like to eat meat. But I converted Skip over to my way of cooking. And when he goes out, he might have chicken or something. But as long as I make it favorable, flavorful, he's like, oh, that's so good. Anyway, this is called coconut aminos. It's like a soy sauce made from coconut. It just has a tad of sweetness to it. You could use any spices you like. You know, you could use soy sauce and all that. I just use a little bit of pepper. I'm not going to use salt because the teriyaki now has salt and I'm going to just rinse my hands off a little bit. I know I use salt uh, a fair amount in my cooking. I never really think of it as a spice. It's just kind of a flavor additive. Yes, and, and so many people will put salt on their food before they even taste it. It's always yeah, I don't know about that. But. Yeah, especially if you're, you have any kind of heart disease or high blood pressure, you should be careful with that. Right. right. So, stir this up. So it's heated through. It's going to take a little bit. 
get the idea of what I'm doing. And then to this, I have to add something of substance. So I got some organic brown rice that I boiled this morning. So we put some of that in here. Gonna have to add more spices. So is everybody yes. ready for I'll talk, go ahead, Alan. Does the brown rice have more nutritional value than the white rice, or is there a big difference? I know the brown rice tastes a lot better, and that's usually what I like. Like the brown rice better. Some people don't like the, like the white. Um, I think it does. It has more fiber for sure. And, hmm. uh, I have to look at the package. That's a big okay. question, but I know it has a lot of carbs, which, you know, that's the main thing that your body runs on is sugar. Your brain needs glucose. So that's the first thing it burns. So I will maybe getting a lot of good carbs like the sweet potato we had, the lettuce, the cauliflower, the rice. I eat tons of potatoes, tons of rice, and I don't get fat. I get fat when I eat fat. I go overboard. Um, that's, just, that's me though, everybody's different. You know? um, well, this is gonna heat through. And then when you serve it, I don't know if you can see it in here. Can you see that? Mm. Alan, can you see it on you? Should I raise it up or down? Well, if I get up nice and close like this, I can see you're holding the pot. Ah, there you go. Yes. Oh. That looks pretty good. Yes, it's very good. The longer it kind of marries with the flavors, like if I serve this right now, it's 321. I'm not going to serve this till 6 p.m. And then I'll add some hot sauce, which is Skip's favorite. That will be it. I might add a little more teriyaki, maybe a little more rice, but I don't have the rice now. But this is easy, and this is a go to of what I, I often eat, you know? Mm -hmm. That's about it. This is simple. I'm going to go and show you a few desserts. Who has a sweet tooth here? I wish I could see you guys. You could raise your hand, but I have a sweet tooth. In fact, I think I have 32 of them. It's crazy. <laughs> I have a sweet tooth, too. <laughs> you have a sweet, what's your favorite sweet food or sweet dessert? Well, actually, I'm kind of a fan of dark chocolate peanut M&Ms. Oh. Did you say bananas? I said have a little cup full of those in the evening, and, and that is like dessert for me. Oh. Tell me again. A couple, you know. that's not exactly true. I just have maybe about oh, seven, eight, maybe 10 of them. Tell me again what's in it. I heard chocolate after that, you lost it. Oh, oh, dark, very, very special ones. Dark chocolate peanut M&Ms. Hard to find sometimes. Me and my friend Tim have had a liking for those for years and years and years. And we're always giving them back and forth to each other, but they are hard to find. Well, they're worth the hunt, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Dark chocolate bags. I like anything with chocolate. Most people do. Um, I'm going to turn you over here because I'm going to show you what I eat when I have a sweet tooth. I eat a lot of dates. I don't go on any dates, but I do eat a lot of dates. And that's because they have tons of potassium and fiber. And it's a natural sugar. I mean, if you have, if I had to do it over again, my kids wanted candy, I'd give them a date instead of candy. I think it's a no-brainer, but uh, let's stay away from the processed things. But what you I have here very good point. for a dessert or a snack, you can always have an apple in between meals, or you can have a rice cake. Cake. It's like styrofoam, but at least it gives you something to chew. Just top it with a little bit of almond butter. You know, that's why they call it butter, almond butter, peanut butter, because you're supposed to spread it like butter. You're not supposed to put a whole lot of it on here. It has a lot of fat, right? So I put about a tablespoon. That's a little bit less than two. Put about a tablespoon of almond butter or peanut butter. And then I'm going to put a little bit of honey on there on the rice cake. Now, I noticed that you wander around your kitchen just like any other person that would normally be a sighted person. I'm assuming you've been working in your kitchen for more than just a few hours, eh? You kind of well, get everything is, you put it away, you remember where it is. Is that the way you work it? Well, I'm not working in my kitchen. I'm working in my 
Well, don't ask me about organization right now because everything's gone, but you're right. Uh, when my kitchen is settled, everything has a place. So it's so easy. I really, everybody feels comfortable in their own kitchen. You know, try to think of a time you had to go to a relative's house or a friend's house. You're helping mm -hmm. them in the kitchen. You just feel, I feel lost at that point. Mm -hmm. I feel so comfortable here. And I'm super excited about my remodel because my counters are going to be mostly white. Because mm -hmm. right now, my counters are like black and gray for those of you can see. They're very, very, very busy. And I can't find anything on them unless it's bright white. I can't find rubber bands. I can't find little gadgets and food. I can't see when there's crumbs on the counters. So I've been wanting to change this kitchen from the day I moved in seven years ago. So thankfully, I'll be able to do that in a couple of weeks. They're going to be tearing it out. Okay, so this one dessert is the almond butter on the rice cake with honey or jelly or whatever. Or I like honey, too. You like honey? I have to oh, yeah. And I got some great jelly over in my refrigerator. My sister up in Illinois has her own grape arbor in the backyard. She oh, has yeah. raspberries around her fence, and she makes the greatest raspberry and grape jam you ever had in your life. It tastes like family. Yes, I love that. I, my favorite is great. I was Did I lose you or not? What's that? Oh, okay. I, I thought I lost your voice signal for just a second. Oh, I, I would love to try that sometime. I can uh, meet you. Up I customer. will have to turn you on to a jar for jam or jelly. Well, jam, well, jam, I'll eat the jam. How about that? That's a okay. Music. Now, do you know the difference between jam and jelly? I don't. Do you? My sister told me. Jelly does not have any seeds in it. They filter them out. And it has a product called pectin, which I think is what is the jelly. Jam, on the other hand, has no pectin. And it, it leaves the seeds and sometimes the, 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 the um, skin and stuff like that all mixed up in there. That's the main difference. Thank you. I didn't know that. Definitely. Um, this, this is still your old kitchen. Is that right? Yeah, this is my old kitchen. And, uh, we're demoing it. Well, the 25th, they're doing the ceilings. They're taking the popcorn off. And then May 2nd, mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, demolish the kitchen. I wish I had, if there's anybody out there that needs cupboards or counter and live in Broward County, please uh, tell Renee and get a hold of me because you can have them. When you come get them, you could have them. <laughs> I was trying to sell them and then I couldn't sell them. I lowered the price very cheap. Still didn't give anybody, and now I just want to give them away. So if you know anybody, let me know. Okay. If I so, hadn't just redone my kitchen two years ago, I would consider them. I've always said your kitchen is very beautiful. Wasn't aware of the issue with the countertops, but I find that same thing. I try to go for high contrast stuff. And one of the things I like to do is I have a dark colored tray that I can set on top of my counter. And if I can't see the stuff against the light counter background, I work over the tray, which is a dark color, and that gives me a high contrast. That it also keeps me from spilling stuff on the floor. Yes, I love that idea. I don't have a tray like that. I, only, I have this one, but this is what I put Skip's food on, and he comes and picks it up here at the bar, just like a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I put everything on here. <laughs> what you're saying, a bigger one, you know, to have these contracts. That's a great idea. But um, I just want to tell you another dessert. It's more I love the time, but I took some great organic plant yogurt and cut up some fresh pineapple. And I put the pineapple on top. And then I'm going to add some chopped almonds to it. And sprinkle some chopped almonds. That's another good dessert. So that's about it. I don't get into too much of the, the cakes, things like that. I'll leave on, you know, I might fall off the wagon. I'll have lemon cake and I buy that at the store. But for the most part, eating like this will keep your weight down. You never feel hungry. In fact, I start to crave this kind of food, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. So um, that's about it. Oh, one other thing I wanted to share with you about my renovation. 
I had about four or five different contractors, even companies come over to give me an estimate on how much it would cost to do my kitchen. And they have their piece of paper and they're writing away on everything. And I have a, a notebook, I must go through dozens of those and big black Sharpies. So as he's writing and telling me things, I'm writing stuff down too. And they're all saying, you don't have to write that down because I'm gonna give you a copy of this. Well, at that point I have to share with them that you know, I have the visual impairment, so much easier for me to write it down in big print than to try to reach, try to read their, um, you know, their little scratch, you know, marks and um, the things that they wrote on their paper, right? So that's yes. a little tip that's helped me, but it's been challenging, but exciting to do this kitchen. I have folders for different things and trying to keep everything organized. And sometimes my eyes just don't cooperate, but Hey, I'm just grateful that I could do it. I'm grateful that I could be here today and share a little something with you on what I eat in a day. I hope it's was you found it kind of interesting, even if you learn one thing. Um, that's a good, that's good. So I appreciate you being here today. Thank you from all of us at ACB. And um, Alan, did you want to say something in closing? Because I want to give I want to give the website. Well, I'd just like to thank the people from ACB for hosting this show. And Net, you did just an absolutely wonderful job. One quick question for you. You remember my magnetic knife trick? I, magnetic yeah, knife yeah. rack? Are you going to put one in? No, I don't. Re I remember you have, you have the knives on your wall there. That is very mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Uh, a trick? I don't know if you can see it back over there or not. I... I uh, get out of the way for just a second, but I have two of them. I have one in each area that I work in. And I think you can also see my CCTV. I expect you have one of those pretty close too, eh? Yeah. I can't see, I can't see the screen. I'm not uh, oh yeah, I understand, yeah. Uh, I can't see the screen too well either. That's why I'm sitting here in front of my computer with a 35 inch monitor off to the side that I try to watch. That's huge. Well, There's tell me, tell me what your trick is. I, I don't want to miss it. Tell me what your trick is. Tell what? Didn't you say you had a trick? You said that you. Well, didn't the the it? magnetic the magnetic knife rack is what I was talking about. Oh, so that's that's the thing you love. That's your gadget that you love. That, that's one of my gadgets. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I like that too. I just don't want knives that accessible. I don't know why. It reminds me of a movie where the, the person grabs it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to keep I my job. In, in I, I hate reaching into a drawer or other various knife holding devices to try to pick one up. I would rather come up from the bottom and feel what a handle is and then just pop it off the magnet. For me, yeah. that's easier. Yeah, that's, that's your personal preference, which is a good thing. I might revisit that idea with my new kitchen. I just don't want to put holes in the where the backsplash is i don't want to put it yes in i do in understand i, I do know. understand i'm a nervous i want to you know keep it really really nice that's just like the first month right just like um, a new car you have to like clean it every day mm -hmm. yeah. but you'll um, have that new kitchen smell yeah oh, i don't know what that's <laughs> gonna be hopefully pizza or garlic but um i wanted to say too that um to give the website for our cooking show. It's so everybody have it. So if you have a pen, you want to write it down. It's called cookingwithoutlooking.wordpress.com. So cookingwithoutlooking, all written out, dot wordpress.com. Okay? Cookie, so cooking without it. looking, Annette? Yes. Um, Did I mess it up? Cook, cooking without looking TV dot wordpress dot com. I apologize. I no problem. No problem. Okay, cooking without looking TV, just tv.wordpress.com. And also about the podcast, um, we're doing dozens of shows all the time. Renee's got some great guests coming on there. Just go to your favorite platform to get your um, podcast, whether it's iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, um, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. You can listen to the shows on Cooking Without Looking. We had some great guests on there and very, very inspiring to everyone because, you know, when someone's visually impaired and you see that they're just living their lives like everybody else, it just inspires you so much and, and makes you feel like, hey, they can do it. I can do it. You know, no reason to be depressed. 
life goes on, um, it could be worse, worse things that we could, you know, have in our life. So I want to thank everybody. What's that, Alan? We'll have to eat, don't we? We all. Yes, we have, that's right. We have to eat, so we have to be in the kitchen. And um, I happen to love cooking, and I happen to love doing this show as well. I, I know it's been a lot of fun and a, a big learning experience. But yes. I want to thank Sheila, uh, Sheila and the other lady from ACB and the Florida Federation of Life. You might want to clarify for me, but I want to thank both of you ladies for coming on today and helping us put the show on. You're very welcome. Yes, Sheila, thank you very much. And uh, to Debbie, uh, Debbie Lewis, I think you're there somewhere too. Thank you guys very much for sponsoring our show. Yes, Debbie as well, Debbie and Sheila. Anything else, Renee, do you want us to add? It's only three, oh, it's 335. For time. Do we have it? <clears throat> Excuse me, are there any questions in the group? You do not have any hands raised. How about forks? Any forks raised? <laughs> Spoon, something. I guess I, I guess I didn't do my job, or did I do my job, or, or maybe everybody knows all this stuff anyway. It's pretty simple. Oh, Lynn, Lynn has agree. her hand up. Lynn yep, Schneider. She just, yes, yeah, she just raised her hand. Lynn, you may unmute. Hi, I wanted to ask you guys. Um, uh, one of the challenges that I have is how to measure drops, um, particularly like vanilla. And um, I also do crafting where I need to have like a certain amount of drops of an herb, um, you know, a, a, an essential oil. How do you guys do the whole drop thing? Wow, that's a great mm -hmm. question. Alan, do you do drops? Well, uh, actually, I do do some drops of some stuff. Uh, and I, I've kind of got it figured out where I've got a, a, an eyedropper thing. And I just kind of squeeze it and fill the thing, I don't know, about three quarters full. And that seemed to have been the right amount for me. But I don't use a lot of stuff with drops. So it's just a matter of having one particular thing and knowing exactly how much. It's kind of like you have to know your kitchen, you have to know what you're doing, you have to know your own limitations. And let's figure that out. It's all pretty easy after that. Yeah. But doing drops could be difficult if you're doing just one or two drops each time. I, I, I don't have a good answer right now. Unless you, unless you, uh, maybe sometimes what I've done is I'll hold a spoon under it and I'll drop it and then I could. I could maybe hear it, or I'm not totally blind. I don't know if you are the lady who asked the question. Are you totally blind, or do you have some vision? Uh, um, I'm total. Okay. Okay. Well, that would make it a little different. Yeah. Um, I don't. I. Gosh. Another. I would hold your finger under it. Okay. So you're holding the. I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head. If you hold the dropper above your finger. And have the bowl below or the container below, if that's possible, if it's not too mm -hmm. small a hole. And just kind of drop it on your finger and then it'll kind of roll off. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, at least you could feel it dropping onto your finger and then dropping into a bowl. I, I don't know any other way unless you could hear it. Sometimes you can hear it. I kind of wonder if they don't make a mechanical device somehow or other that would measure out single drops of stuff. That would be I, a good invention. A lot of stuff in somebody's catalogs for pouring liquids and things. I, I don't recall ever seeing a dropper measurer. But that might be something right. to look. And uh, one more quick question, if I could. Um, I yeah. love grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Um, and every once in a while, I just want a grilled cheese, but I guess I have a fear. We have a gas stove and I'm sort of, I'm afraid of frying anything on top of the stove. Like, can you give me any, any, um, tips Lynn, about I, doing it safely? <laughs> I got a great tip for you because I love grilled cheese sandwiches too. I bought one of these little George Foreman grill things. Mm -hmm. 
And that works so nice. Uh, you plug it in. When the thing comes up to the temperature, it makes a little click sound. There is a light that comes on too, but if you can't see it, it makes a little, little click sound and you know it's preheated. I use it with a timer. I found that about two and a half minutes is just about right for a good grilled cheese sandwich. You could experiment a little bit yourself. But I'm a real big fan of small appliances, such as the George Foreman grill. And Annette, I know that you use an air fryer a lot, and I use my little toaster oven because it's only me. And they right. just seem easier to use. Yeah, that's that's a great tip. The George Foreman is like perfect because it doesn't seem like it really could ever burn. Because when I use a waffle maker, it kind of reminds me of the George Foreman. I leave my waffles in there. They don't really burn. So it's kind of like get really well done, which is good. But if you want to do grilled cheese, like Ellen said, that's perfect. Or you can use an air fryer. Yeah, that's okay. That's great. We do have an air fryer. And I asked my sister and she said she didn't think you could do a grilled cheese in an air fryer. But you have to turn it over. So take some tongs. And um, I, don't, I don't have grilled cheese, but I'm assuming, I don't know how long it would take, but you could mm -hmm. feel it when you open it up. You can feel if it's crispy on top because what happens mm -hmm. is the top cooks first and then you turn it over and then you can cook it a little bit more on the other side but yeah the George right. Freeman would work because I use it a lot to melt things on vegan burgers things like that I'll put a vegan burger in there with cheese and even I should try the bread but I just put cheese in the vegan um, burger and it works great yeah hey, thank you for burgers for a lot of different things it's good Mm -hmm. I hope that's helpful. Anybody else have any questions? That was a good one. Laverna, you, could, Laverna, you can unmute. Yeah. Go ahead, dear. Hello? You're, you're muted, Laverna. He does mute. Is that what's going on? Yeah, she's muted. Okay. If you didn't hit the got it, you will not be able to get unmuted. <laughs> okay, am I unmuted? There, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Tupperware makes a little grill, and Ooh. you can put it in the microwave, and all you do is take your bread and your cheese and uh, put it in the microwave and put the top on the grill and microwave it. I believe it's for two minutes. There are recipes that come with this booklet and you can make grilled cheese that way. I love it. That's a good one. It's very quick. I didn't know Tupperware had something like that. Yeah, me neither. We're learning something every week, aren't so you obviously like grilled cheese, ma'am, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that on, that on a vegetarian diet? Oh, wait a minute. Cheese would not be, would it? No, cheese is vegetarian. It means you eat no meat. Vegan is no dairy or okay. meat. Yeah. Okay. A little, bit different. a little bit different. Okay. Well, thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that. Annette, you did a great job. We'll see. Old Kitchen. Old and Kitchen. From the show, we'll love it and come and get it and take it away from you. Old host, old chick, old, old chicken. I mean, old kitchen, <laughs> old host, new kitchen, old host. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you getting new appliances too? Uh, just a new stove and a, uh, maybe a low profile microwave. Half the size of this one, but it's 30 inches, but it's low profile. So it's not so bulky because we don't microwave a lot just to warm stuff up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I use it for, too. Yeah, so I'm excited next time. Maybe I'll see you guys in my new kitchen. Thank you. Happy Easter and Passover, everybody. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>